What is up guys, my name is Ignas, welcome back to the channel. With the ongoing meltdown in China stocks, many names from tech, e-commerce and education industries have been consistently losing value. Ben Harburg, the managing partner at MSA Capital, was invited on CNBC to share which industries there are still investable. This was his response. So Ben, as somebody on the ground, where are you putting money to work right now then? Uh, I mean, again, there's so many verticals that are untouched and un uh, unaddressed by any of these regulatory changes. So healthcare remained a massive boom point here in China. Um, the regulators supporting it, talent flow returning to, to, to town to support it, uh, a huge arbitrage and deficit between the quality of care and services and products in Western markets and those here in China. A new consumer, again, a, ver a very non-controversial space. Uh, seeing tremendous growth, domestically built brands, uh, consumption channels, uh, and then we believe core technology, so chips, operating systems, quantum, anything that kind of bolsters China's independence, uh, a lack of, of necessity for core inputs coming out of the United States is seeing tremendous regulatory support, uh, subsidies, and of course investment dollars. And, and all three of those areas where we invest are booming today. So Ben suggests that the likes of healthcare and core technologies are the way to go where China is concerned. On the other hand, who's to say that new policies will not be brought into already successful industries? Maybe the opportunity is actually in the beatdown names. So for today Today's comparison I have picked three largest internet retail names. These are Alibaba, ticker symbol BABA, JD.com, JD, and Pindua Doa, ticker PDD. In order to make the comparison possible, we will be looking into eight different factors. Last four quarter learnings results, annual revenue growth, analysts price targets, forward price to earnings ratio, price to sales ratio, return on equity, cash per share, and current ratios. The best company under each factor will get a point so it is possible to have from 0 to 8 points and in the end the stock with the most points will be considered the winner of this comparison. I hope that the rules were clear so let's begin. First factor is the last four quarter earnings results. When a company reports earnings, they are compared to expectations of analysts. So earnings can either beat expectations, meet them or miss them. We will consider that beating expectations is a plus 1, meeting plus 0 0.5 and missing 0. Then we sum the results up to a minimum of 0 and a maximum of 4. And in the end, the stock with the highest sum gets a point for this factor. So these are quarter earnings for Alibaba and Q2 of 2020 beat expectations. Q3 beat, Q4 beat expectations, and Q1 of 2021 missed. So with 3 beats and 1 miss in quarter earnings, we get a sum of 3. Quarter earnings for JD, and Q2 of 2020 beat expectations, Q3 beat, Q4 beat expectations, and Q1 of 2021 beat. So with 4 beats in quarter earnings, we get a sum of 4. Quarter earnings for PDD, and Q2 of 2020 beat expectations, Q3 beat, Q4 missed expectations and Q1 of 2021 beat. So with 3 beats and 1 miss in quarter earnings, we get a sum of 3. Results for the last 4 quarter earnings factor are in the table and with a sum of 4, JD gets the first point. Next factor is the annual revenue growth. As investors, we want to find that the revenues of a company are on a steady increase. We will take a look into the revenues of the four most recent years and compare them one by one. If revenue was on the increase from one year to the next, we will consider it as a plus one, and if it was on the decrease, it will be a plus zero. Then we sum the results up to a minimum of zero and a maximum of three, and in the end, the stock with the highest sum gets a point for this factor. So these are annual revenues for BABA, and going into 2019, there was an increase to 370 6 billion Chinese yuan, then into 2020 there was another increase to 509 billion, and going into 2021 there was another increase to 717 billion yuan. So with three increases in annual revenues we get a sum of three. Annual revenues for JD, and going into 2018 there was an increase to 460 billion Chinese yuan, then into 2019 we had an increase to 576 billion, and into 2020 there was another increase to 740 45 billion yuan. So with three increases in annual revenues, we again get a sum of three. Annual revenues for Pindua Dua, and going into 2018, there was an increase to 13 billion Chinese yuan. Then into 2019, we had an increase to 30.1 billion, and going into 2020, there was another increase to 59 billion yuan. So with three increases in annual revenues, we again get a sum of three. Results for the annual revenue growth factor are in the table, and since each company has a sum of three, no one is a the point for it. 
Next factor are the analysts price targets. As investors who want to find how far the current share price is away from the analysts price targets. If the current price is below the average analyst target, we will consider the stock as undervalued. And in the end, the name which shares are furthest away from the average analyst target to the lower side gets a point for this factor. So for Alibaba, we have 23 price targets of analysts. They range from the lows of 190 to the highs of $336 per share. The average is at $272.82 and the current share price is at $154.03. This means that we currently have 77.9% room for the current price to reach the average target of analysts. For GD we have 8 price targets of analysts. They range from the lows of $62 to the highs of $130 per share. The average is at $91.88 and the current share price is at $62.93. This means that we currently currently have 46% room for the current price to reach the average target of analysts. For PDD we have 11 price targets of analysts. They range from the lows of 85 to the highs of $221 per share. The average is at $150.27 and the current share price is at $77.69. This suggests that there is still 93.42% room for the current price to reach the average target of analysts. Results for the analyst price target Targets factor are in the table, and with most room for growth, PDD gets the first point. Next factor is the forward price to earnings ratio. It is calculated by taking the current share price and dividing it by the estimated future earnings per share. This is the standard price to earnings ratio with the difference that earnings here are predicted by analysts. So, in the end, the stock with the lowest forward price to earnings ratio gets a point for this factor. Alibaba has a forward price to earnings at 2.11. Forward price to earnings for JD is at 4.11. 24. And Pindua Doa has a forward price to earnings at minus 77.74. Forward price to earnings ratios are in the table, and with the lowest positive value, Alibaba gets the first point. Fifth factor is the price to sales ratio. It is calculated by taking the company's market cap and dividing it by the trailing 12 months worth of sales. The formula suggests to be looking for a company with a low market cap and a high result in sales. So, in the end, the stock with the lowest price to sales ratio gets a point for this factor. For Baba, the price to sales is at 0.56. Price to sales for JD is at 0.12. And PDD has a price to sales at 1.3. Price to sales ratios are in the table, and with the lowest value, JD gets another point. Next, we will be taking the return on equity. The ratio shows how well the company is managed and if money from investors are efficiently handled. So, in the end, the stock with the highest return on equity percentage gets a point for this factor. For Alibaba, the return on equity is at 13.75%. Return on equity for JD is at 31.53%. And PDD has a return on equity at minus 14.19%. Return on equity percentages are in the table, and with the highest value, JD gets one more point. Next factor is the cash per share ratio. It is calculated by taking the company's cash and dividing it by the shares outstanding. The ratio shows the company's ability to reinvest and expand, but also to buy back shares or pay dividends. So in the end, the stock with the highest cash per share ratio gets a point for this factor. For Alibaba, the cash per share is at 177.75. Cash per share for JD is at 87.19. And PDD has a cash per share at 66.9. Cash per share ratios are in the table, and with the highest value, Baba gets another point. The last factor we will take a look into is the current ratio. It is calculated by taking the current assets and dividing them by the current liabilities. As in Investors will want to check if the company is able to cover its debts with assets, but also if they are actually being leveraged. So in the end, the stock with the highest current ratio under 3 gets a point for this factor. Baba has a current ratio at 1.76. Current ratio for JD is at 1.4. And PDD has a current ratio at 1.76. Current ratios are in the table, and with equal values, both Baba and PDD each gets a point. We can calculate the results, so Alibaba has 3 points points, JD3 and Pindua Dua 2. This means that we currently have a tie between Baba and JD. So let's remove Pindua Dua and reassign the points. For last 4 quarter learnings factor the point goes to JD, annual revenue growth point is not assigned, analyst price targets point goes to Alibaba, forward price to earnings ratio point to Alibaba again, price to sales ratio point to JD, return on equity point goes to JD again, cash per
per share point goes to Baba and current ratio point to Baba again. We can recalculate the results so Alibaba has 4 points and JD 3. This means that with a sum of 4 Alibaba is considered the winner of this comparison. And that was it, if you got value or new ideas then make sure to push that thumbs up, it helps the channel a lot. Now there is a question for you, are you buying into any of the beat down China stocks? Share your moves in a comment below. If you are interested to know exactly when I buy or sell in a stock then consider the options on Patreon. By becoming a patron you will get access to Discord where I share a stock watchlist with my buy and sell price targets. This could be a great option to track my moves closely. Last week we did a stock comparison on a few memory and storage names with Micron Technology, Seagate and Western Digital. And there is also an update for our stock watchlist and eToro portfolio. If you are interested in any of these then click on a video currently on the screen. And that was it from my side, thank you for watching and I will be seeing you all in the next one.